Jesus said to his disciples, He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not kick his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet because he is a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives to one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. Ushuha la laha amina ye. Ushuha la shiha Good evening. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Rita. Are there any Ritas here? Just by show of hands? Or quite a few. Happy feast day to you. It's a beautiful, beautiful feast day. And you'll find it's a, it's a saint that is beloved by the Chaldean community. You won't find many Americans or Europeans named Rita, but every family has a Every Chaldean family has a Rita in their family, right? We love St. Rita. But she almost didn't come to be. See, St. Rita's parents had a hard time conceiving. And at an old age, they almost lost hope. And one night while at prayer, an angel appeared to her mother. Amata Mancini was her name. And he told her that you will conceive a child and you shall call her Margarita. That was her original name. And then they shortened it and she became Rita. She is the first person in recorded history to be called Rita. So if your name is Rita, this is where the name comes from. And she was given special graces even at a young age. The day after her baptism, there was a story of a swarm of white bees that came to her, would drop honey into her mouth, and, and just fly away. They will not sting her or wake her up. Even as a child, St. Rita had a profound prayer life. She had a, her own prayer room in her home where she would go and pray for hours. She just wanted to be in solitude with the Lord. St. Rita's favorite meditation was the Passion of Christ. <clears throat> Even in that room, on the wall, she would draw pictures depicting the Passion of Christ so she, the pictures can help her meditate on his Passion. To this day, the bees and her meditation of the Passion of Christ are still connected. Every year since her death up until today, a swarm of bees built a hive right next to the monastery where she lays. They go there during Holy Week and they leave on her feast day. So today, those bees are going to depart. See, St. Rita wanted to consecrate her life to the Lord and she wanted to enter the convent, but her parents wouldn't let her do it. They arranged a marriage for her. She was married and had two sons, Giovanni and Paolo. Right? She was married to a very immoral man. He would physically abuse her. He would insult her, and he would not honor his marriage vows. St. Rita endured his insults, physical abuse, and infidelities for many years. But through her humility, kindness, and patience, St. Rita was able to convert her husband, and he finally changed his ways. Now, her husband had many enemies. Even though he changed his ways, his enemies still wanted to get him, and one day they ended up killing him while he was walking home at night. You see, in Italy at this time, in the 14th century, there was this thing called la vendetta. So by law, it was your right, if somebody kills a family member, you can go and exact revenge to honor the family name. It was not illegal to do so. 
So knowing this, St. Rita gave pardon to her husband's killer during his funeral. And he was, but his brother still wanted to take up the family name, right? To honor the family name. So he went and tried to kill the man that killed his brother. And he needed help. So he tried to recruit St. Rita's two sons, Giovanni and Paolo. And he was successful because they had a plan and they were going to help their uncle revenge their father's dead, death. And St. Rita tried her best to convince her sons, this is not the way. We are Christians. This is not the way. But to no avail. So she prayed to God for her sons to not become murderers. That same year, both of her sons died of disease. Many consider this an answer to her prayers that her sons would not be murderers and would not lose their soul. With her family all gone, she wanted to fulfill the dream that she had as a child, to enter the monastery. But the monastery did not accept her because of the family feud, and she was a little bit older. She was a later vocation. They wanted younger women to enter the convent, so she implored her three patron saints, St. John the Baptist, St. Augustine, and St. Nicholas of Tolentino. It is said that she was at prayer one night, and all of these three holy men, these saints, appeared to her and snuck her into that monastery. And when the prioresses woke up, she told them what happened, and she was finally accepted to be a nun. You see, in her icons, we see three things. Of every picture of St. Rita, you will see one of uh, three things. We see bees, which we explained earlier, the significance of it. We also see St. Rita having a wound on her forehead. When she was 60 years old, while meditating on the passion of Christ, God gave her the grace to have partial stigmata. When St. Rita passed away and they exhumed her body, her body was incorrupt and that wound in her forehead was still fresh. The other thing we see in her icons are roses. Right before she was to die, she was bedridden, and one of her cousins visited her. And she's like, is there anything I can go grab from your old home? She asked her for a rose from her garden. And her cousin said that this would be impossible because it was in January. But when her cousin went back home, she found a single blooming red rose. This is why we call St. Rita the saint of the impossible. Because a lot of impossible miracles have happened, not only through her life, but also through her intercession. If you read her biography, it's full of miracles, especially for couples who are trying to conceive. If there are anybody in here that's any couple, or you know of any couple that's trying to conceive, have them do a novena to St. Rita and see what happens. Every saint is honored by the perfection of certain virtues. Right? St. Rita, it was patience, forgiveness, obedience, and humility. See, we learn from St. Rita, not only we strive to have virtues, but there is nothing in this world that we should love more than God. In the gospel that I read today, Jesus says that if you love your mother, if you love your father more than me, you are not worthy of me. Obviously, Jesus is not telling us to not love our parents. He would be contradicting himself. One of the commandments is to honor your father and your mother. What he is saying, that he needs to be the most important thing in your life. Because whoever finds his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for the kingdom will find it. That's what Jesus is saying. And St. Rita didn't want to lose her kids, right? But she wasn't thinking about this world. She was thinking about the next. She knew if her kids continued that path, they would lose their souls. That's a tough prayer to pray as a mother. God, take my kids away because they're about to commit a sin. The only family members I have left, because my husband passed away, my parents are gone, I was an only child. This is all I have in this world. But if it means losing their souls, Lord, please take them away. That's how important being holy meant to this holy woman. How do you pray for your kids? How important are your kids' souls to you? How often do you go, we go to the Lord imploring him, whatever it takes, Lord, my child is yours. What we can learn from St. Rita is that we also need to have virtue in our lives. 
but most importantly, to do everything in our lives for the glory of God and to realize that with God's grace, nothing is impossible. Amen?